everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we have a delicious Christmas cookie. These are called Joe Froggers. They're a rolled out, cut out, delicious, highly spiced molasses cookie, and they're chewy and they're delicious and you're gonna love them. This is all part of the Noreen's Kitchen 2017 virtual Christmas cookie exchange and we'll talk a little bit more about that after we get going. Let's go see how these all come together. Before we go over all of the ingredients, I will let you know that this video is part of a collaboration that I am hosting. This is my 2017 Noreen's Kitchen virtual cookie exchange collaboration. Participants are obviously me, Heather at the Needy Homesteader channel, Kimmy at She's in Her Apron, Shelby from the Queen's Cabinet, Jennifer from the Family Fudge, Fallon from Moss Family TV, Tina and Danny from Phillips Fam Bam, Jamaril from Jamaril's Large Family Table, and Sarah from Simply Sarah Kitchen. I will also be setting up a playlist where you can go and it'll just play all the way through and you can enjoy all of these recipes. Today I am making a special recipe called a Joe Frogger. This is a seriously spiced, chewy, thin molasses cookie that has its roots in the 1700s. What you will notice is there are no eggs in this recipe. So if you are an egg-free person, you will be able to make this cookie. If you are vegan, just simply swap out the butter for vegan butter or margarine and you'll be good to go. What you're gonna need is one cup of butter softened to room temperature, three cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of molasses, one cup of sugar, a third of a cup of dark rum or spiced rum, and one tablespoon of water. You can't substitute the rum. So this is for flavor and all the alcohol is gonna burn off anyway when you bake it. A teaspoon of baking soda, and then this is your spices. I've got a teaspoon and a half of salt, a teaspoon of ground ginger, a half teaspoon of ground allspice, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. The molasses needs to go into a larger vessel. What you wanna do is you wanna mix your baking soda and your molasses together. There's going to be a chemical reaction here. You want this to sit for 15 minutes until this molasses basically doubles in size. Our molasses and baking soda mixture has been sitting for 15 minutes and as you can see, it indeed has doubled. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're going to cream our butter and sugar together. Okay, that's creamed, it's light and fluffy. I'm going to add in the rum. We're gonna mix this up. Now I have scrapers on my beater, so you want to stop if you don't have those and scrape it down. I'm going to add all of my spices and I'm also going to add one third of the flour. Now I'm going to add half of the molasses, mix that in. I'm going to add half of the flour we have remaining, mix it the rest of the molasses and the remaining amount of flour and we're gonna blend that up and we'll have cookie dough. And now you have cookie dough. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put this in a different vessel and I'm going to refrigerate it for at least six hours, overnight is best. If you plan on making these cookies, you're gonna to wanna to make them the day before, and then the next day you'll wanna set aside some time because these are gonna to need to be rolled out and cut. So I'll be back when it's time to roll everything out and make some Joe Frogger cookies. All right, my dough is chilled. You're gonna need a three and a half inch round cutter. Now this one is three and seven sixteenths, so you know. Uh, as close as you can get. If you don't have one, a large uh, canning jar lid, a wide mouth canning jar lid actually might work really well. Let's see. 
Oh, that's like perfect. Yeah, that would work as well. We're gonna go ahead and get started and I'll be back and I'll show you what these look like when we're cutting them out. All right, what you wanna do is roll out half of the dough to a quarter of an inch thickness or thereabouts. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna cut 12 circles. You're gonna line two baking sheets and I'm mine are 13 by 18. They're a half sheet pan. You're gonna line two of them with parchment paper and then you're gonna put six cookies on each cookie sheet. You don't wanna put more than that because these are gonna spread a little bit. Then you're gonna bake these for eight minutes at 375, and then you're gonna leave them on the pan for 10 minutes to cool before you remove them to a wire rack. So let's see if I can get 12 out of this. I think I can. Now I have baked off some already, so I'm just gonna reuse this piece of parchment. These are gonna spread a little bit, I have a pan in the oven already, so when these come out of the oven, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what they look like. There you have it, Joe Froggers. These take a little bit of time, they take a little bit of patience, but they're really easy to make overall and they are really delicious. I just want to show you, they're nice and soft. Look at that. They're soft and they're moist and they're spicy and they're perfect. I think this is like the ultimate Christmas cookie. Um, and I'm gonna share with you what these cookies are all about, what their little bit of history is. And I'm gonna read it to you directly out of, um, this is adapted from a recipe in this Cook's Country 2007 annual. Contributor Bridget Lancaster, she's actually on the show, and she talks about how she went to a bakery in, um, Marblehead, Massachusetts, and found this cookie and fell in love with it. And in an attempt to develop a similar cookie, she found several recipes and she tried and she made some adjustments and she came up with this one. She says, the story goes that the authors tell the story of Joseph Brown, a freed slave in Revolutionary War veteran who lived in Marblehead more than 200 years ago. Brown was known as Old Black Joe and his wife, Lucretia, affectionately known as Aunt Cressy, opened up Black Joe's Tavern in part of Marblehead called Gingerbread Hill. And besides serving drinks, mostly rum, Joe and Auntie Cressy baked cookies, large moist molasses and rum cookies made salty by the addition of Marblehead seawater. These cookies were popular sustenance on long fishing trip voyages as they had no dairy to spoil and the combination of rum, molasses, and seawater kept them chewy for weeks. According to Samuel Rhodes Jr.'s History and Traditions of Marblehead, the funny name for these cookies referred to the lily pads, similar in size and shape to the cookies, and large croaking frogs that would fill the pond behind Joe's Tavern. Thus, the cookies became known as Joe Froggers. So I wanted to share that with you because nothing makes me happier than learning the history of a recipe because this recipe is over 200 years old and we get to eat it today in 2017 just the way that maybe Aunt Cressy made it in, in Old Joe's Tavern. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I also hope that you will take time to use the link down below and go to the playlist that I have created that includes all of the wonderful channels that are participating in this virtual cookie exchange. Please remember to check out Heather at the Needy Homesteader, um, Shelby at the Queen's Cabinet, Kimmy at She's in Her Apron, Jennifer at the Family Fudge, Fallon at Moss Family TV, Danny and Tina at Phillips Fam Bam, Jamarill at Jamarill's Large Family Table, and Sarah at Simply Sarah's Kitchen. They have all contributed wonderful video recipes today to help you get ready for Christmas and enjoy some delicious sweet treats along the way. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you are new to my kitchen, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. If you came looking for recipes to help you get through the holiday season, you have come to the right place. Please remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are a tried and true member of the Noreen's Kitchen family, please remember to hit the bell notification button. We don't want you to miss out on any of the real food for real people, real easy recipes that we present all the time right here on our YouTube channel and straight from our kitchen. I hope you give old Joe Froggers a try and I hope you love them. And until next time, I'll see ya.